Once again welcome to this uh, NPTEL video course on advanced PDE part 2. So, so far you have heard essentially the elliptic PDE portion variational uh, formulation, abstract formulation and other aspects. So, now we will uh, move on to study uh, evolution equations. So, essentially we will be covering the three important uh, equations namely the heat equation which is a prototype of uh, parabolic equations. In fact, whatever we study you can apply even to general parabolic equations and then wave equation uh, prototype of hyperbolic equation and the one coming from quantum mechanics namely the Schrodinger equation. So, actually you do not have uh, a classification for this equation, uh, but because of its importance uh, <coughs> describing a, the dynamics of a quantum particle. So, we have included this and this falls in the category of evolution equations. So, it is indeed possible especially for the first two equations heat equation and wave equation. One can formulate uh, like you have seen in the case of uh, <coughs> elliptic equations, one can formulate these equations as a weak formulation and uh, do a parallel study as you did it for the elliptic equation. But here we have chosen a different path for the study of these equations namely we use the theory of semi groups, semi groups of operators to tackle these evolution equations. And this semi group theory uh, has certainly played uh, in unifying many of the PDEs, uh, but now nowadays it is also plays an important role in other branches of uh, <coughs> mathematics. Uh, for example, in control theory, probability, etcetera. Okay, so and there is also some non-linear version of this semi-group theory. So, we can also tackle uh, non-linear equations. So, this is an important uh, uh, <coughs> branch of mathematics itself. So, we thought of giving some uh, brief discussion about semi-group theory. Of course, we cannot do uh, the theory in the entire details because that will take up the entire time for this course. Okay. So, <coughs> and to study semi group theory we do need again the study of unbounded operators from functional analysis. Uh, so, these are the prerequisites. Uh, so, you should uh, study yourself and have some good working knowledge about these things. So, I will just briefly recall some of the important things we will be uh, using as far as semi group theory is concerned. So, after developing basic uh, definitions and some results, we will just only state the important uh, theorem namely the Hill-Yoshida theorem and then <coughs> Uh, once after 
developing that semi group theory and Heliocida theorem, we will come back to this uh, evolution equations. So, as a motivation to study of this semi group theory itself, okay, consider this ODE in a finite dimensional space namely R n. Okay, so, d u by d t is a u. So, a is an n by n matrix real or complex it does not matter. Okay. And for this Cauchy problem, so if you impose an initial condition, so this is in R n. Okay, so, we know that the solution immediately given by uh, e to the t a u 0. So, in fact, this one you can define for all t a. Ah, okay. So, in fact, we can consider <coughs> such an equation in a Banach space. Okay. So, again an abstract Cauchy problem Banach space x. Again you consider this uh, ODE. Okay. Now, A is a bounded linear operator. Okay. So, this is space of bounded linear operators. Uh, from x to x. x to x. So, that is my notation. So, we will be using again. So, you impose this initial condition. So, this is the abstract Cauchy problem. So, as long as A is a bounded linear operator, the same formula again holds. So, there is absolutely no problem in defining the exponential of a uh, bounded linear transform. So, then we get more ambitious and then we ask what if we remove that boundedness. Okay. What if A is not in B x. So, again we consider the uh, abstract Uh, Cauchy problem, but now A is may not be even defined <coughs> uh, on entire X. So, it may be just a subspace. So, we call it domain of definition into X linear. Okay. So, that is the setup. So, can we imitate uh, the finite dimensional case and bounded uh, case in order to again write uh, this u t as e to the t a. So, I put this in quotes because we do not know what that is. Okay. So, is this possible? That is the question. And if yes, what is this meaning? What is this? That is the what is this? Okay. So, these are these questions are answered uh, by uh, the semi group theory, and semi group theory also puts necessary and sufficient conditions 
on such a operator. Now, it is only a linear operator, there is no boundedness. Okay. So, let me just uh, consider the heat equation and see how that can be put uh, in this abstract formulation. Okay. So, typically evolution P d so like heat equation and wave equation can be uh, put in the form of an abstract OD in some space. Okay. So, that is uh, <coughs> that x, x we have to. Uh, <coughs> so, for example, so if you consider this uh, d u by d t, the heat equation. Okay. So, u is a function of x and t. Okay. So, what we do is, so we consider this as a function of u t belonging to some function space. So, for each t, so u of t is a function. So, u of t, so again this a temporary notation. So, for each fixed t, we consider u t as a function, not just a value, okay, because it also varies uh, with x. Okay. With this understanding, so we can write this as so d u by d t as a u. So, now a u is the Laplacian. Okay. So, this <coughs> A acts on a function space and as long as we can give appropriate meaning and again class of u for which this is well defined. So, <coughs> we can write uh, an this heat equation uh, in the form of an abstract OD. Okay. So, similarly we can do that uh, for the wave equation and Schrodinger equation. So, once we study this abstract Cauchy problem, so we can apply uh, those results to the wave equation, heat equation and Schrodinger equation. So, that is the idea, that is the idea. So, typically an evolution P d e can be written as an abstract uh, O d e in some function space. Okay, so, x will be that Banach space will be some function space in each of these uh, cases and so we have to uh, <coughs> develop. So, what sort of operators A will generate the so called semi group or group. Okay. So, before we go further, so let me again just, uh, so for bounded uh, matrices are for bounded uh, operators. So, we, we know this e to the uh, T a. Okay. So, let me just put that as T of T. Okay. So, when a is a matrix or a is a bounded. So, let us recall some properties here. Okay. So, this T of T 1 plus T 2 is T of T 1, T of T 2, uh, this is of course. So, they commute and this is again trivial <laughs> thing and with some simple computation you also see that this T of T 
minus i tends to 0 as t tends to 0. So, this one is either matrix or operator norm ok at the case may be. Okay. So, this is referred to as semi group property in this case it is also a group property because it is defined for all T in R here. group property and this is of course, uh, at 0 it is identity and this is referred to as uh, continuity. Okay. So, when we develop a general <coughs> theory of such operators. So, this each T T is also in let me write as B x. Okay. So, this is what uh, so this may not be defined for all T in R, but at least we hope uh, for example, in the case of heat equation we can expect the solution only for T. Uh, non negative. Okay. So, at least we hope this one for T non negative. So, that is fine. So, then it becomes only a semi group not a group and again this one it turns out that is a very uh, <coughs> strong property uh, generally not this if this condition holds then we get back to this situation. Okay. So, actually it turns out that suppose this is after uh, much study okay so it's not immediate okay turns out that uh, 3 implies tt is actually a to the t for a some bounded operator Okay. So, since we are uh, trying to develop the theory for unbounded operators, okay, so certainly uh, 3 cannot be expected uh, <coughs> because otherwise if 3 is expected then we again come back to the uh, bounded case. Okay. So, this 3 has to be replaced by a weaker condition 3 needs to be. replaced. Actually, this is uniform continuity because we are taking in the norm. So, this is uniform continuity. So, only by strong continuity. Okay. I will define later <coughs> uh, okay. So, this is uh, T of T x minus x tends to 0 as T tends to 0 for all x in x. Okay. So, this is strong continuity. Of course, one can even take uh, weak continuity, but we will just restrict uh, in all our cases the strong continuity is satisfied uh, <coughs> and we will stick to this. Okay. So, one of the important objects associated I will define this semi group properly little later. Uh, so, we call it a semi group semi group of bounded uh, linear operators or simply C 0 semi group we call it semi group that is all.
so one of the impulse so <coughs> so t t so is a semi group so again considering this e to the t a okay so you can just uh, see that e to the t a minus i divided by t this converges to e when a is a bounded linear operator Okay, so this convergence is in the operator norm. So similar to this, we can now <coughs> uh, introduce this. Okay, so consider x belongs to x such that limit. T T X minus X divided by T as T tends to zero plus exists. So this is in the norm of. <coughs> so whenever that limit exists, so you define define A by A X. Limit so whenever this limit exists. So at this stage, it's not even clear. Whether there are non-zero x for which this uh, limit exists, certainly zero is there. So, but <coughs> so it's certainly defined. So, so this uh, the set of all such x, the set of all such x in x. This is clear. Forms. A subspace uh, of X and A is linear. So these are clear. Okay, so there is no problem with this. Okay. So in general, obviously we cannot expect this limit to exist for all X in X. Okay, so it will be only a proper subspace of X uh, on which this A is defined. Okay, so A is so call it this uh, A from D A to X. So this is a subspace. And this is again in X linear. Okay, so we call <coughs> such linear operators as unbounded operators since they are not defined on the whole space X. Okay, so this leads us to the study of uh, these unbounded operators, and in order to get more properties of so A is by the way called generator of or infinite. Uh, generator of T T. So, we need to study uh, <coughs> in some detail uh, about this unbounded operators. So, of course, I will not be able to cover uh, 
that topic in detail. A good reference for uh, this unbounded operators is again Rudin's functional analysis book or <coughs> whatever functional analysis book you have studied in which the theory of unbounded operators uh, is covered. So, this also contains a brief discussion about semi groups. So, you can also uh, see that. Okay, so, this is one you can keep in mind. Okay, so, the importance that A is not defined on the whole of uh, x uh, is given in this theorem. In fact, this is very old theorem of Hellinger Toplitz. This is somewhere in it is more than 100 years old. So, somewhere in 1910. Okay. So, let H be a Hilbert space and so t from h to h be linear and symmetric so that is t x y is equal to x t y for all x y in h. Then t is bounded. So, it is important here that t is defined on the entire space. Okay. Later on we see uh, symmetric operators which are not defined on the entire space, they need not be bounded. Okay. So, this is an easy application of closed graph theorem and there are extensions also. Okay. So, that is uh, so this when we replace this H by a proper uh, subspace, you know the many interesting things happen and we move out of this bounded region. Okay. So, let me <coughs> okay. so let me just uh, with that motivation, so we can now a quick review of unbounded operators. Okay, let me just uh, begin and I will continue in the next class. So, x is a Banach space okay, so far our discussion. So, with norm right. So, a is from some subspace Okay, so, is linear. Okay, so, this d a again important thing. So, it is the domain of definition of a. So, soon we will see uh, two operators can have the same expression, but with the different domains of definition and they are certainly different. Okay. Uh, okay. 
So, uh, we introduce this so called graph knot graph knot of A A x. Of course, since we are using A x here, so this is defined only for D A. So, it, you can check that with this graph norm, this space D A subspace D A becomes a norm linear space. Uh, I will stop here and continue in the next class this discussion. Thank you.